What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the U.S. of Angling. This is day number two here at Lake Pleasant in central Arizona. This lake is absolutely massive. It's 10,000 acres. Yesterday, I was very intimidated, did not have much confidence, and we learned a lot and we caught some fish. If you clicked on this video, one of two things, you either just like watching fishing videos or you are here at Lake Pleasant looking for some information on how to attack this giant body of water. I'm here to help you guys out today and we're probably going to catch some fish along the way or at least that's the plan. So let's go catch something. All right guys, we made it down to the water and first things first, just as far as how to pick a spot, especially from shore fishing, there is so much shoreline. What I learned yesterday is get into the coves. These coves are more shallow. This lake's 200 foot deep. The fish are looking for warmer water from March until June, I can say for sure that that's gonna be the case. Middle of summer, middle of winter, not 100% sure on that but just as far as where to focus on where to fish if you're fishing from shore breaking down the body water of a 10,000 lake or ache into a small section like this can be a lot more productive than just going out and chucking your lure out in the middle where you know there's water absolutely everywhere so first tip focus on something small like this where there's some stick ups in the water, still depth. Hopefully the wind dies down a little bit, but a little bit of wind is actually good. Just makes it harder to see into the water. All right. So we're starting off with a Blue Thunder Bobby Garland. Just a little crappie jig. I'm hoping that the fish that moved in here last night, maybe a couple of them are still in here. There we go, right up against those stick-ups right there. Got one, got one, got one, got one, right away. Awesome, Let's see what it is. White bass, oh my gosh. There's a giant, giant, giant bass chasing him around. There was a huge bass. And I'm gonna put this on a stringer because we're eating some fish today. I should check the regulations. I'm gonna check them right now and let you guys know what I find. All right, come on. Let's see if there's not a couple more white bass tucked up in this cove right here. I'm not sure if you can see, but see how there's a giant drop off. So there's a bunch of water here and then there's some stick ups. There's some structure over there. If you can find a place like that, def oh, there, there's another one. Definitely fish that area. Another white bass. All right, fantastic. Definitely fish an area with some depth and some structure inside of a cove. These fish were not here at all yesterday during the day. And last night, or yesterday evening, they moved in. And they are still here right now. They are still here, which is absolutely fantastic news. All right. I'm thinking we need to do a catch and cook. Take a cast out a little bit further. It opens up a little bit. There's just one creek channel that runs right through here, but out there it gets a little bit wider. So those fish could be just out there a little bit further too. Especially since I've caught two of them in here. I don't know how many I can catch without getting them too spooked. So I'm using a jig right now, but you can use I mean, these white bass will hit a lot of different things. You can use a, a small spinner, like an inline spinner. 
Yesterday I caught one on like a jerk bait, like a Rapala, just kind of snapping it close to the top of the water. There's a lot of different ways that you can fish for these white bass. There we go. <laughs> Felt that one thump it. Big time. See that clear water, just goodness, that is so cool. So cool. Man. Yep, there's so, the first two I caught were close. They were right in there next to these stick ups. They might just, as the day goes on, just based on what happened yesterday, I think they move out into deeper water. Because like I said, during the day yesterday, I did not see these fish. So right now we're here early. The sun just got into the sky. And they're still in here, but they're probably gonna be moving out here soon. So we're gonna take full advantage while we can. We are going to take full advantage while we can. Let's cast back out there, let's see. Let's see if we got a school of them out there. For me and JC, four fish like this would be plenty maybe five there's another one there's another one goodness isn't that just crazy isn't look at it. he just inhaled that bait that bobby garland back of his throat there we go all right guys i don't want to keep a whole bunch of them I got, this is number four. All right. I'm just happy that these fish are still in here. I wasn't sure if they were going to be or not. They are definitely in here and they are definitely active. So we're gonna hit these white bass as long as we can this morning. And then as the day goes on, we'll change up tactics. Ugh. They seem to be out there a little bit deeper. There he is. There he was. <laughs> How fun is this? How fun is this? Well, that's a little bit nicer one. Yeah, th this one's a bigger one. Not way bigger, but definitely bigger. Check him out. All right. I'm gonna put him back. Not because he's big and let him go, let him grow, but just as far as eating them, I've got four little ones right now. I might keep one more small one, but that'd be quite a bit of meat right there. All right, let's see if they're just not out there. Last couple casts I've been getting hit. That was a nicer one though. Got another one. Yes. Come on. <laughs> How much fun is this? Honestly, I think four is gonna be plenty. I'm just gonna keep four. I, this is another good little eater size, but should I just keep four? Yeah, I'm just keeping four. I'll let him go. If I change my mind, I'm sure though. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have plenty of uh, more fish to catch. It's fun when you make long casts like that and they hit right away. 
You get to have fun reeling them in. There. Oh. <laughs> Boy, did when they hit it, they hit it. That was a thump. I don't know how I missed him. I don't know how I missed him. Watch my rod tip here. Got him. They just annihilate it. Yeah, there's no questioning if you've got a fish or not. They thump that thing. There we go. Early in the morning like this though, that's, I think that's the name of the game is, at least from a shore fishing standpoint, you gotta get them while they're in these coves. They could already be moving out a little bit deeper. So we might have to go chase them out that way just a little bit, I'm not really sure. So we just moved from right over there out to here. There's a little bit deeper water. And as I was saying, as the day goes on, those white bass, I mean, from what I can tell, they move out a little bit. So we're gonna hope that there's still some hungry ones in this cove, there should be. I'm gonna let that sink down a little bit. Maybe they just went down a little. There's one. <laughs> he hit right up here at the end. <laughs> Woo. There's one. He was still in here looking for a snack. Oh man, those are so fun to catch. Just ridiculously fun to catch. He probably followed it in a ways, is what I would bet. There's another one. There's another one. He feels bigger. Or he's just tuned up. Yeah, he's he's a little bit bigger one. Ooh. Goodness, these are a blast to catch. Four pound test. I mean, just an absolute blast. Let's see how many more are sitting down in here. I was just thinking, hmm, maybe they moved out. Nope. They just come in these schools. Yesterday, when there's no wind, you could see schools. They were actually mixed in with those big shad. At least that's what I'm gonna call them. That's what they look like to me. Like the same size as the white bass, but you'd see a big school of them, and you can tell by the tails. The shad tails were forked. Those won't bite a lure. No, I shouldn't say that. Maybe It's not something that you wanna fish for. Yeah, they're mixed in, so if you see a forked tail, don't really waste your time fishing for that exact fish, but if there's a bunch of fish, they are mixed in. You can tell the white bass just because their tails aren't forked. It's more of a triangle. Should I move out further? I'm gonna go see. I'm gonna try and move out further. It might not work. If it's too terribly windy, I'm not gonna mess with it, but there's one more spot that I'd like to try. You can kind of wade out into the water. We're going to try and wade out here a little ways. That fell down again. Time for a new one. These jigs right here. Bobby Garland. Blue Thunder. Favorite color, favorite jig. You can catch anything with these. I've been dipping my rod in the water, I just noticed. Bluegills, crappies, walleyes, white bass, largemouth. I mean, anything that eats a minnow eats a freaking Bobby Garland. Okay, come on. Tell me there's some white bass still sitting out there. 
after I hit this spot for bass. Oh, there's one. White bass aren't completely done. There we go. See you later, little bud. Real. Yep, got another one. That is a nice one. <laughs> Just a killer way to spend a morning. Darn it, darn it, darn it. I kept thinking they were done and then they weren't and then I thought they were done and they weren't. All right, we're back out here where it's a little bit deeper. Sun's starting to get pretty high in the sky though. White bass, oh my goodness. There's a white bass right in front of me. Come on. Right in front of me. Come on. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. Awesome. You know why that's awesome? Because I was upset. Shouldn't say it yet until he's on land. Yes. Now I can do a catch and cook. Four for dinner for me and JC. And one for a catch and cook. That had to have been that one that I saw too. I'm sure it is. So this is just, I don't know if I mentioned, but obviously this is just one cove. There's tons of coves. Focus, the north end of the lake looks amazing. There's another one. There is another one. Goodness. Oh, there's a whole school of them right there. A whole school of them chasing this one. You gotta be kidding me. There was like five more swimming with it. I wonder if you could see that on camera. I don't need any more, do I? Let's see if I can cast back out holding this one. I kinda wanna go put this one on the stringer too. Have six. Hold on, four for me and JC, one for a catch and cook? No, I need two for a catch and cook. As I was saying, this is just one cove. If you get on Google Maps, not the Google Maps, get on like Google Maps. If you've got an iPhone, not the just maps on your iPhone. The other one shows the water clarity so much more. I don't know what it is. It's like they've got a polarized lens. And you can see into the water and you can see breaks. Any point, any finger like this that comes in that you can see that there's depth. This is the only one I've fished, but I know this is not the only point that those fish move into. Stringer's looking better and better. But that is definitely all that I need now. All right, guys. Well, I have to say that was a pretty darn good morning. We got six white bass. Two of them are going to be a catching cook. And four of them are gonna be dinner tonight for me and JC. So I am going to dispatch them. A lot of people like to bleed their fish out. In my opinion, it's not necessary, especially for something this small, maybe for a giant flathead, but all you have to do is kill them. 
if you kill the fish before you fillet it, it doesn't bleed into the fillet and the fillets come out nice and white. I'll show you guys with these ones. Obviously, further along in the process, I'm not showing the whole fillet job, but we'll get those taken care of and then we'll flame up and I'll show you guys the fillet and let's have some lunch. All right, guys. So I knocked these guys in the head with a rock. Walked up to get my fillet knife, so they're all good and dead. Next time you see these fish, they are going to be pearly white fillets. All right, guys. We've got two fillets here. The rest of them are over here. This is the front, this is the back. So this is the side that touches the scales. On the white bass, there's a bloodline. That's what all this red part is. You want to cut this part out if you don't want a fishy taste. Honestly, it's not, I mean, it's still delicious. If you don't want to go through and cut that out, it's not that big of a deal. But like I was saying, this was just a quick rinse, just like that. These fillets come out pearly white. If you fillet those fish alive, which isn't cool anyways, blood goes into the meat and they're a lot harder to clean. So that is not bled out. I didn't cut their gills. I didn't do anything. I hit them in the head with a rock, filleted them up. They're perfectly white fillets. These things are ready for the frying pan. I'll just show you how to take the bloodline out. Really easy. You can either do it sideways like this. If you're real picky, you do lose some meat like this. Or if you're cooking for someone for the first time, see just that little chunk. You don't have to get all the red by any means. I mean, maybe just that one more little piece right here like that. That is a delicious filet. Bunch of good looking filets right out of this crystal clear water. You gotta love it. We are back at the camper because I forgot my pan. Yeah, wouldn't be a good fishing trip if you didn't forget something. So rather than having two white bass for lunch, and then me and JC splitting four for dinner. We're just having a late lunch and eating all six of them. So got my butter flavored Crisco, Louisiana Cajun, the absolute best breading to date that I've tasted. I haven't tried that many because I'm obsessed with this one. If you got recommendations, let me know. I like spicy. And the most important ingredient, can you see that? Six beautiful looking white bass. All right. That sounds mean. Oh God. That sounds really freaking mean. That sounds like halfway destroy, not full destroy. So I'm sure that's gonna get hot enough. In the meantime, I bred all my stuff in a Ziploc baggie. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen catching cooks, but this is my first one. So I'm gonna show you how I usually cook fish. It's gonna be freaking delicious. I haven't had fresh fish for a minute. Remember, key to getting them white. Kill them first before you play them. I'm gonna have to get both hands on this thing. I can see this going horribly, horribly wrong. Freaking boiling hot oil all over my feet. Yeah, that'd be really bad. We got our toasty. Put in just a one piece to see if we've got the heat right. It's it's continuing to get hotter. I just turned it up. We are dropping in the fish. Our tester was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I need a little bit smaller one for the middle. Oh yeah. This is a big, oh yeah. It's gonna be freaking delicious. Ooh, got a little bug in there. As if there wasn't enough protein. That's a pretty lame joke. Pretty freaking lame joke. We're trying it.
I can say how amazing it is, but it's what I was expecting. It's what you should be expecting too. Absolutely amazing white bass. Freaking amazing. It sucks that you have to hold this in the whole time. pieces it's falling apart that's just fine with me I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get all this this all in one batch or not I don't think so. Almost. The US of England's first catching cook? Complete disaster. Forgot the pan at the fishing spot, came home, set everything up. The wind decided to change directions and blow everything all over the place. Keep the flame down so they didn't get perfectly crispy, but they're almost perfectly crispy which is still delicious so i appreciate you guys watching that was a heck of a morning thanks again guys